Marie G. Marshall. Age feels that youth is not yet mature enough for responsibility. Youth feels that age has passed its prime. The parents insist they have given too much. The children declare it was never enough. In this matter, as in so many others, the definitive word belongs to Shakespeare. How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. He must not stay here. Rachel, Rachel, I cannot believe that you are saying this. He cannot stay here. But he is sick. He will die if we send him away. He must. He can't stay. Why not? Because he wants to kill us. See? This sick, weak, fighting... I tell you, a ravenous beast has come in here. In the shape of this young man. Right. So you are saying that he is some sort of demon in disguise? Is that what you're saying? No. I'm not saying any more. I may have said too much already. Our mystery drama, The Serpent's Tooth, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose and Paul Hecht. I'll be back shortly with Act One. decade of the 20th century, just a few years away from the First World War and the firestorm that would destroy the empire, Vienna, a doomed city, but you'd never know it. Even Paris didn't shine as bright as Vienna, which had become the first city of the arts. And the stars of Vienna, Mahler, Schnitzler, Zweig, and Sigmund Freud, all oh, the art, the music, the poetry, the literature, the drama. And, of course, once you left the brighter that boulevard, the poverty. So many people were formed in the crucible of that era in Vienna. It's just a few steps further, my young friend. Salvation is in sight. Hot food, a comfortable fire, a snug warm bed. You will not die tonight, my boy. Oh, oh, oh. Careful, don't stumble. Let, let me hold your arm. Don't you feel better already? Come, stand by the stove. Warm yourself. Okay, oh, hello, hello, my dear. Good Sabbath. Good Sabbath? Uh, who is he? He is our guest. Our Sabbath guest. Well, well, my boy, you feel better? Uh, how would you like to wash up? Uh, straight ahead through that door. Do you think we have a bathroom? Yes, my boy, we have inside plumbing. Now, just go ahead and refresh yourself. Oh, come, come, don't be shy. Go ahead. Who oh, is yes, that? Rachel. Where did you find him? In the gutter. Obviously. Rachel, Rachel, we are commanded to bring home a guest for the Sabbath. Oh, please. And he does not have to be well-dressed or respectable. Oh, but a big limit. If he is hungry, if he is homeless. And he's going to sleep here, too. My dear, this is part of our marvel, our religious obligation. Jacob, there's something about his eyes. His eyes? There's, there's, there's a wild, I don't know, something terrible in his eyes. Of course, it's because he's terrified. He has looked on the face of death. Now, what kind of nonsense? He is a youngster. Who... Youngster? Is at least 20? Well, you see, he had decided to die. What are you talking about? You know how children are. He's not a child. They decide that life is unbearable, and so... Well, they, they lie down and die. And that is what he did, right there in the street. This is what he told Oh, no, 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 he didn't tell me. He hasn't spoken a single word to me. But I can see it in his eyes. And there he was, lying in the gutter. Uh, I stumbled over him. He could have been drugged. No, 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 not a sign of liquor. I know that if I had not picked him up, if I had let him lie there... Rachel, he, he would surely have frozen to death. Yeah. All right, and all right. besides, he is an artist. <laughs> How do you know? In this little bag, obviously all he has in the world, a threadbare shirt, 
some torn socks. And look, look, paint brushes, pieces of charcoal, and some small sketches. And they're not at all bad. <laughs> Who knows? We may have saved the life of a future genius. We don't even know your name. Everybody calls me Abby. Mm-hmm. Do you have a surname? What do you want to know that for? Oh, it's uh, not really important. Uh, didn't Shakespeare say what's in a name? Shakespeare. He was an English poet. Oh, yes. I don't like him. What? You don't like Shakespeare? I hate all English poets. I despise England. Oh, really? The English are, are very fine people. Anyhow, you do not have to tell us your name, Artie. And, well, I, I understand... Why you don't want to? Is that so? Hmm? You're hiding from the police. What do you mean, it's hiding from the police? Well, Rachel, it's a perfectly normal thing today. Thousands of young men are doing it. You see, they, they do not want to register for military service. Isn't that true, Adi? Uh, the food is getting cold. Oh, yes, yes, my dear. Uh, we must have the kiddush and the prayers for the bread and the wine. The bread and the wine like the Catholics. Oh, are you Catholic? I was born a Catholic. But I come from everybody's a Catholic. But me, I'm nothing. Oh, come now, Adi. Everybody is something. Oh, yes. Yes, I shall be something. I shall certainly be something someday. But you see, right now, I, I don't know what my something is. I can almost see it. Pieces of it exploding in my mind. But so far it hasn't come together to form the picture. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes, of course. And the colors, also sharp. Blood red, ebony black, shimmering white. Yes, you will be somebody, all right. You will be a great artist. How did you know I'm an artist? Well, it is obvious. It is. It is written on your face. You have the... Sensitive features of an artist. The, oh, yes, the deep, brooding eyes. You really mean that? Artie, can we fight fate? Look at what fate has done. Fate has brought you, an artist, to me, an art dealer. <laughs> <laughs> You're an art dealer? <laughs> well, I'm not, not very big or important uh, as an art dealer, but we are well matched. You are not a very big or important painter. I I give you my word. I will never desert you. When I become famous and fabulously wealthy, you will still be my dealer. Shake hands on it. The soup is getting cold. Jacob, this guest of yours. Adi. Well, how long is he supposed to stay? Oh, well, I... He's still asleep. What do you mean, he's still asleep? You left the house this morning, he was still asleep. The morning was gone, he was still asleep. Here it is getting dark, and he hasn't wakened yet. Well, the poor boy. Keep away. What? Keep away from me. I know who you are. I know all of you. What? What is this? Yes, this goes on all day. He has nightmares. Although I don't know if he's really asleep. I looked into the room. He was sitting on the bed. What's the matter, I asked? And what did he answer? You don't know me. You don't know me now, but you will know me. No, but Rachel, you will know me one day. Something is the matter. You're telling me. I'd better see what is wrong. Jacob, please. This boy, this, 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 this person, he can't stick here. He is a poor, sick human being. I'm scared. You're scared of what? Of him. Of him. Of this pathetic in a consumptive looking Jacob, I'm frightened. I swear to you one day I'll be something. He's delirious. Jacob, don't be impatient with me. But I'm terrified. Of what? Of something about him. Something in his eyes. Oh, he needs help, Rachel. He is a child of God. He needs help. I see. I see. Adi. I see the scar. Adi. I... Adi, my friend. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's me, uh, Jacob. What's wrong? Why do you sit there and, and stare like that? I see the skull. Coming white skull. 
the piles of bones shining in the black night. And the blood. <laughs> it has dyed the earth red. <laughs> Burning, crimson, red, white, black. No, oh, no, no. Of course, how do you see it? It is the painting in the museum. The painting of death by Von der Slay. No, no, no. no, no. You better have something to eat. Adi? White, black. Adi. The doctor. If he is sick, take him to the city hospital. Oh, That's what the city hospital is for, isn't it? They have a charity ward. The charity ward? Oh, no, no, Rachel. People only go to the charity ward to die. Uh, uh, it's not our responsibility. Please, don't talk like that in front of him. He's a human being. He has feelings. Stop and hear a word you're saying. He's mad. Look at him. Why? He's mad. I'll run after Dr. Block. In this weather, you'll catch your death, of course. No, no, I'll just worry. But Block is an old man. He'll catch his death. Don't you understand? We are responsible for this person. Why? Rachel, what, what are we arguing about? We, look, we never disagreed on helping another human being before. Why do we fight about it now? I'll pay for a carriage. Take him to the hospital. Let me call Dr. Block and we'll see. Yes. We will see. I said we'll see. Uh, come, come in, Dr. Block. I uh, better get warm at the stove before you see your patient. Oh, Dr. Block, you shouldn't have come. No, you shouldn't have come. But I was told I was a very sick person in this house. Rachel, what is the matter with you? Nothing. But your face, it is so flushed. You look so nervous. I, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, there is the patient, Jacob. Well, come this way, Dr. Uh, 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 Hardy, here is Dr. Block. That's his name? Hardy? Uh, yes, yes, Doctor. Oh, oh, he's a fine-looking boy. Mm -hmm. Very sick, I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But a fine-looking boy. He has the face of an artist, an intellectual, fine-looking boy. Doctor, Doctor, what is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? Well, it depends on which doctor you ask. You... Look at that pale skin with the flush just underneath, the rapid breathing. You feel that racing pulse and the vein running down the temple. You see it throbbing. Yes, but what is wrong with him? Um, be patient, I will tell you. Uh, Dr. Freud, for instance, this Dr. Freud would say, we see here the classical signs of a deranged personality. But, but what do you say, Dr. Block? I say it's pneumonia. Ah, pneumonia, that's awful. What are we going to do? He has to go to the hospital. Uh, how can he go now? He, he needs the kind of care only they can give him. Wouldn't he be better off in the hospital, Doctor? Oh, there's no question about it. Well, you see, Jacob, you see. Uh, but it is too late now. He can't travel in his condition. He can't. Uh, move him now, take him out in the street. Now he will talk. You see, Rachel. No, his only chance is to stay here. Keep warm. I will leave you some medicine and everybody pray. I want you to wrap him in blankets, Jacob. And I will call a carrot. And we Rachel, will say... You didn't hear what the doctor said. You'll die. Then... I'm sorry. But he cannot stay here. But why, Rachel? Why? Because he intends to kill us. She's a good woman. She's kindly, warm-hearted, and hospitable. And you could feel the distress in her voice as she spoke those words that sounded so harsh, so alien to her nature. To turn that young man out into the street would, in fact, be a sentence of death. And yet, she could bring herself to pronounce it. But what does she know? Why is she so convinced that their Sabbath guest is a murderer? Well, the second act will soon be with us. Are the eyes the true mirror of the soul? Is what we are really written in our eyes? 
If so, how clearly? And to whom is it given to be able to read the message? Rachel Cohn looks into the feverish eyes of a mysterious young man, and in them she sees one word written in letters of blood, and that word is death. I, I can't believe it's you, Rachel. I cannot believe that this is my wife. You say this young man intends to kill you? Oh, Doctor, yes. I see it in his eyes. I'm so frightened. Of what, well, my dear? Why? Black. Of black. Of what he mumbles in his sleep? After you left, Jacob, I came in here to look at him, and I could see those awful colors, red, white, and black, flashing in his eyes. And I, I ran from the room. I sat down in my chair, and I fell asleep, and I had a nightmare, and those colors were suffocating me. And then you came. You came back with the doctor. He has been working very hard, Doctor. Oh, oh, quiet, quiet. The young man seems to be waking up. Oh, oh. Doctor Bloch is Doctor Bloch is here. I must not die till my work is done. Save me, Doctor Bloch. For my mother's sake. Please. Uh, he is fallen asleep, and that is the best thing for him. The sea that he takes has this medicine. Yes, yes. Uh, Rachel, uh, I, I'm sorry I spoke so, so loudly to you, but but could we turn him out to die? Could we? I don't want to talk about it. But we must, because well, this is so unlike you. Very well. Suppose some ravenous beast, some deadly poison a snake had come in here to live in human form in the shape of that young man. Do you know what you are saying? Even the most ignorant, superstitious peasants would hardly believe... Uh, Dr. Block, I appeal to you. Uh, why not take her to see this, Dr. Foy? Do you hear what she is saying? That this sickly young man is actually a, a dangerous, murderous beast in human form. That, that is what you're saying, isn't it, Rachel? I'm not saying anything. I have an idea. I may have said too much already. You're up, I see. Yes, yes. What a glorious day. Yes? What little that's left of it. Uh, you don't like me. But I like you. You remind me of my mother. She's dead. You have the same rich, dark hair, the same luminous eyes. What are you staring at? Nothing. You are. You're staring into my eyes. What do you see in my eyes? Now? I see nothing. Yes. Just like my mother. Beautiful. Kind. And strict. Oh, yes. You have to behave yourself around my mother. My father, he was very loud and he threatened, but he never did anything. My mother, she knew just how to punish you if you deserved it. Your soup is getting cold. Yeah, you and my mother, you always worry about food getting cold. I have an older brother. He will end badly. When he was 13, he was arrested for stealing. And later on, he was arrested again. My mother wrote him a letter in jail. Do you know what she wrote? Ask me. What did she write? She wrote, So you are even a failure as a thief. The only thing left for you to do is hang yourself. I cannot believe that a mother could have written such a letter. <laughs> You're right. She didn't. I wrote it. And I forged her signature. Ah, you two seem to be getting on famously. Surprise. Surprise and congratulations. Adi, I sold one of your sketches. What? Which one? The one that looks like a picture postcard of the opera house. Oh. Ten kroner. Here, ten kroner. Ten kroner. 
I'll uh, take your commission. Oh, no, no. I'm waiting for the big ones. There, Rachel, you see these ten corners? Look at them as the advance guard of an army. An army of ten million corners. Congratulations. Rachel, this young man is a fine artist. And, and you can turn out scores of these little watercolors, even in bed while you're getting better. I don't like small sketches. Oh, yes, but they're very popular. What do the masses know? The ignorant masses. People have to be taught. People have to be whipped. Oh, do you don't mean that. I have decided not to paint anymore. What is this? Here you stand at the threshold of your great success and you say... No more! But, but you can make a, a good deal of money. I despise money. Money is the enemy of the creative artist. You will need money to go to art school. I have been refused admission. What? No, no, that's impossible. The list of all those who would not qualify was posted, and my name led all the rest. Oh, that is, I, I'm, I'm sure that is a, a mistake. You, you have a fine potential. Yes, it is a mistake. And they will pay for that mistake. All those fine gentlemen, all those stupid evil gentlemen. I shall pay them back. I shall have my revenge. Yes. Yes, of course. Pay them back by becoming famous and successful. That is the better of them. I have given up painting to be an architect. An architect? The architect shapes the city. Show me the house that man builds and I will tell you who man is. Yes. Far be it from me to discourage you, Adi, but that requires money. Money? How much money? Oh, hundreds. No, thousands of kroners. How many thousands? How many thousands? Five thousand. Oh. Well, I would suppose five thousand. I can raise five thousand. You? You can raise five thousand kroner? What? At ten kroner a sketch, you would have to paint five hundred. No, no. <laughs> no, I can have the money by my Saturday. <laughs> You say you can raise 5,000 kroner by Saturday? Yes. How? I shall buy a winning lottery ticket. What do you mean you'll buy a winning lottery ticket? Isn't the winning ticket worth 5,000 kroner? But hundreds of thousands of people buy those tickets. It's no concern of mine. But your chances of winning are only one and maybe a million. I shall win. What? makes you so sure? Because I was born to win. I shall become the most famous architect in the world. It is my destiny. Well, if you really believe that... Oh, Rachel, why do you feel you must discourage No, you? no, no, Herr Jacob. Frau Rachel is only doing what she must. She is fulfilling woman's purpose, which is to weaken man's resolve. Ah, dear, I wouldn't exactly say that women... Even the angels and the saints, even women like my mother and Frau Rachel, seek to turn man's face from danger, from life as it should be lived. Ah. Ah. Well, so, so, you you really believe that you will win the lottery? If hmm? the money is needed to achieve my destiny, then I shall win. All right. How many tickets do you want me to buy? <laughs> What a question, Herr Jacob. What a question. It's only necessary to buy one. It's time for your medicine. Thank you, Frau Rachel. How do you feel? I think I feel stronger. Yes, much stronger. Would you, would you care to see some of my sketches, my architectural sketches for the new city of Liz? Do you, uh, you have to do them in color? Red, white, black, black. It's as if they're, they're moving, as if they're alive. They, <laughs> they keep the twisting and changing. Yes, that's exactly how I see it. Uh, this, this building, this, this building here, what? What is it? It frightens me. This building? Yes. Why, why does it make me think of death? How did you know? How did I know what? That's what it's supposed to be. A house of death. A 
Good evening, Herr Jacob. Are you were uh, right. How right you were. Do you know what happened? You won the lottery. Oh. Oh? You mean you win 5,000 kroner and all you can say is, oh? Why are you so excited, Herr Jacob? Why? Well, because... 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 Well, it's, it's the money you said you needed. I no longer need that money. Oh, you think you don't. You young people, you believe the world spins on love and ideas. No, not I. Well, beyond the state, Sidon, put the money in the bank. If you give me your ticket, I'll, I'll cash it in for you. My ticket? Yes, you, you have the winning ticket. I'll be three, three, seven, seven, seven. Where is it? Where is it? Don't. Andy, don't tell me you lost it. Oh, no, no, how could you lose it? You, you have not been out of the house. I didn't lose it. That is something to be thankful for. Come, where is it? I destroyed it. <sighs> no. You, you what? I tore it up and I threw it away. <laughs> you, you tore it up? When? The day before yesterday. But why? Because I don't think I shall become an architect. But I thought you wanted to because it was your destiny. A man can change destiny. But but would that be a reason to tear up a lottery ticket? Yes. No, I don't understand. Hey, Jacob, why did I buy the lottery ticket? Because you wanted to win the first prize, 5,000 crowns. Why? 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 Because it will be necessary for your architectural career. Yes. But since I do not intend to be an architect at this time, there is no need for the money. And I lost interest in the ticket. But you didn't have to throw it away. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Why? Afraid I would be seduced. Seduced by what? By money. Money is the most obscene, the most demoralizing, the most destructive prostitute of all. No, 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 no. Adi, it is how money is used. Money is not the root of all evil. If you read your Bible carefully, you'll see that it says, love. Of money is the root of all evil. With all due respect, Herr Jacob, it is the Bible that is the root of all evil. The Bible of Judea and the Bible of Rome. It demands of all with its false comfort for the weak and the meek. Well, I'm sure if you read it carefully, both testaments, mine and yours. I have no testament, but I have seen the weak and the meek. I have starved in the gutters with the weak and the meek. And why are they weak? And why are they meek? And why do they starve? Because they have been fools. I think it will all be made up to them in another world, a better world. But this is the only world there is. Adi, if you do not intend to become an architect, what is it that you want to do? Oh. Oh, I have already decided that. <laughs> I have chosen a very important endeavor. I'm going to write an opera. How long, Rachel? Uh, These tiny cakes, they are delicious, Rachel. They have never been so... Don't change the subject. How long? Well, the boy is... Sick. How many times must you be told he is not a boy? If you do not believe that he is sick, just ask Dr. Block. Yes. He's still sick, but he can be moved to a hospital. Rachel, do you realize that from the split second he came into this house, you took a severe dislike to him? I can't help it. Maybe I can see into the future. That is impossible. But these terrible colors, red, black, and white. What is so terrible about red, black, and white? I see them in his eyes. Imagination, pure and simple. I'm saying he has some kind of power. Give me an example. If you want to talk about it, let's really talk about it. It's my fault. Ah, what do you say? I was never able to give you what you want him more than anything else in the world. A son. Ah, Rachel. And so you look for that son. Everywhere. In every young man. No, we have to talk about it, Jacob. You need a child to love, to teach. But Rachel... Please, don't make this any more difficult for me than it is now. I know what you see in him. Brilliant, yes. But I see something else. Evil. Rachel. I can't help myself. Rachel, he has such... Such enthusiasm. 
enthusiasm, such fire, such raw energy, but such confusion. He needs to be directed. I want to direct him. Oh, I can help him, Rachel. Jacob, let me say this. Just this. And I shall never again say another word against him. A snake. Oh, please. A deadly, poisonous snake. It's somehow trapped in the bitter winter cold. And it becomes dormant. But warm it. And feed it. And its eyes open. I, I cannot permit you to... And you think you have won him over with your kindness. But he is a snake. It's not his fault. And sooner or later, when he has enough strength to strike, he obeys the urging of his very own nature. He must. I know what you're going to say, Jacob. But God help me. And God forgive me. This is what I see. What are you doing out of bed? Well, I was feeling a bit stronger this morning. Uh-huh. I didn't know you played the piano. Oh, yes. I have a friend back in Lynn, August Kubizak, a Gusta. He's a musician. You'll meet him one day. I would listen when he took his piano lessons. That's how I learn. You play very well. But I don't know how to write music. You see, I am able to compose music, but I don't know how to write it. Well, you could learn. I have no time. I have so much to do. Do you write music for Rachel? A little. Oh, well, would you help me write down my opera? <laughs> it's the kind of opera Wagner would have written. He should have written it, but he didn't. And so I shall. All the music is running through my head. Do you have a name for the opera? I have the name, the story, everything. It's called Wieland the Smith. It's the ancient heroic legend of Wieland. You see, one day, the wicked king cruelly, carelessly lames Wieland for life. And Wieland takes his terrible revenge. He rapes the king's daughter, he kills the king's sons, and then uses their skulls as drinking cups for wine. But, uh, isn't that somewhat... And uh, in a uh, glorious climax, he hammers a pair of wings in his forge, and he flies away. <laughs> Can you see that shining moment? What is the purpose? Revenge! Wieland the Smith is the personification of revenge. Implacable, ruthless revenge. But is it necessary to be so violent? Yes. Violent, storm, stress. Wasn't that how the world itself was created? Well, there are beautiful things in this world, too. Yes, Father Rachel. I agree. And the most beautiful thing of all is violence. <laughs> Rachel, I came as quickly as I could. Couldn't you find Dr. Block? Uh, no, he's with some patient somewhere. Tell me what is wrong. Adi, I'm worried. You worried about Adi? Well, perhaps I, I was... Well, I don't know. All day, he, he's sitting in his room. He doesn't say a word. He doesn't move a muscle. I speak to him. He doesn't hear. What could it be? And those, those colors, those, those colors keep throbbing in his eyes. Those terrible shades of red, white, and black. But he seemed so calm, so happy. I, I thought he had found himself in music, finally. And it is good music, isn't it, Rachel? But it's wild music. It has a strange power. Adi? Good afternoon, Herr Jacob. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Well, you just go out. Is that why? I must go, Herr Jacob. Where? 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 My destiny leads me. And what does that mean? Your uh, opera shouldn't have finished. There are so many more important things in this world. But it's, it's good. It's uh, good. Adi, I, I say this only in your own best interest, but you must learn how to stick to something. I am. I'm holding on to my destiny. Who? Who is it? I... Uh, after me. Into the other room, quickly. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ah, uh, 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 yes. This is the home of Jacob Cohn and his 
wife, Rachel Cohen? Oh, yes, Inspector. Won't you come in, please? And who else lives in this house? Who else? You know the law. All persons domiciled in an establishment must be registered with the police. Well, there's, there's just the two of us. Well, that answers one question. The second question, you are Jacob Cohn, the art dealer? Yes. We are looking for a young man who has not reported for his military service. We have here his photograph. Have you seen him? Why should I have seen him? We have reason to believe he is an artist. He may have tried to sell you some pictures. Examine the photo, please. Have you seen him? No. And you, Paul Cohen? Uh, no. Very well. If you should ever see this young man, should he ever approach you, it is your duty as loyal subjects of His Majesty the Emperor to notify the police. Yes. Yes, Inspector, we, we understand. His name is Hitler. He's also known as Adi. Yes, Inspector. That is all. Good day to you. A good, good, good day. day. Okay. No. No, wait. Let me make sure he's gone. All right. All right, Rachel, it's clear. Adi, he's gone. Thank you. No one has ever done anything like that for me before. It is nothing. It's everything. Is it safe for you to go? I know how to avoid the police. Good friends. Kind friends, I must leave you. Yeah. Where will you go? I cannot stay still. Remain in one place. I must always move, move. I can never be at rest, at peace. You, you get older. You look forward to a little peace and rest. You'll come back. You'll see us sometime. Oh, yes. I'll come back, Father Rachel. Herr Jacob. I give you my solemn oath. I shall come back. And he did. Almost three decades later. He came back in a swirl of the red, white, and black. A sea of red, white, and black banners. A stark black swastika centered in a pale white circle against the blood-red field. He came back to realize his vision. The gleaming white bone shining in the pitch black night while the earth had turned a burning crimson. I shall be back but for a more peaceful purpose. Invariably, when we present a story of someone who actually lived, we are asked, is it true? Well, we could say that truth is relative, subjective, and elusive. But uh, that would be begging your question. And so... The answer is, yes, it's true. It's true in all of its basics and most of its facts, which is what we strive to do here seven times each week. Our cast included Norman Rose, Paul Hecht, Ann Shepard, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Where am I? These are the sandwich islands. Where? Where is the door? Rest easy, Captain Fenlight. You are in good hands. I am the Reverend Elihu West, and my daughter, Mistress West, is with me. Lie quiet while we minister to your wounds. What? What did you call me? Captain Fenlight. Oh, oh, what is this? What's happening? I'm not Captain Fenlight. I'm Walter Davis. The Sandwich Islands. They're on the other side of the world. And, and why is it so dark? Is it night? No, Captain. It's high noon. Then why can't I see anything? Your heart. You've been hurt. Hurt? I'm blind, I tell you, blind. Oh, Lord, what is it? Am I dead? What happened to me? What? E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time, pleasant dreams.